David Moyes begins his sixth year at Everton against a manager whose longevity he'd love to replicate. Arsene Wenger well into his 11th season as top gunner. Lee Carsley and Alan Stubbs played in Moyes' first Everton selection and they're still around to play in his 220th. Stubbs replaces Gary Naismith and a defence that sees Jolly and Lescott switch to left back. Leon Osmond comes in for injured Tim Cahill and James Vaughan makes his first Everton start in attack. Vaughan, now 18, remains the Premier League's youngest ever goal scorer. Arsenal have Colo Toure back from his post-Carling Cup final ban and he's been detailed to play it right back with Justin Hoyt switching to the left and Gilberto in the centre of defence. Otherwise, it's as you were at Aston Villa on Wednesday with Julio Baptista beginning what Wenger says are ten games to determine his Arsenal future. Leon Osman finds Lescott. Forced wider by Jungberg, but he still managed to pick out Osman with the pass. It's a poor pass from Osman. And DRB sees that Carsley comes across his path to goal. Shuts the door firmly in his face. And Carsley, who scored two goals for Everton against Arsenal, but on both times ended up on the losing side. Here's Johnson. Was he being held back by Gilberto? He might get in anyway, and Lehman stretches a glove across. Everton fans think that their number eight was brought down. Let's take another look. Vaughan just got the faintest of touches. I think Lehman's done brilliantly. Fabregas. Baptista. It's through for Ali Adier, and Howard comes out, and he too makes a good challenge. Calls for a penalty at both ends, not really from the players, it has to be said, but the supporters are getting excited. And the game is livening up. Howard had to time that one perfectly. The touch from Ali Adier, and it went into the gloves of Howard. This is what had Everton fans all excited. How strongly was Jens Lehmann leaning on Andrew Johnson? Mark Plattenberg happy enough. Zitski to Baptista. Can he get a full head of steam up here? No, because he's running to Lee Carsley. Doing the job he's done so well for Everton for a good few years now. about David Moyes, well, Carsley's a little bit ahead of him, he's already into his sixth year, and Carsley has a go, and it's the post, what a tremendous strike, the follow-up goes wide from Vaughan, and Lee Carsley could not really have struck that any sweeter, Lehman was beaten, well, Lee Carsley arrived at Goodison Park, a month before David Moyes took charge, he's been one of the stalwarts to the side ever since. And occasionally, he comes up with a spectacular. David Moyes thought that was going in. A little bit of room now for Justin Hoyt. Parsley's getting across to him as quickly as he can. Rosicki. And the idea. Gone for goal. And Tim Howard has just managed to get it behind. Caused the goalkeeper more problems than it initially looked like it would. Swerving, dipping. Howard's dealt with it pretty well in the end. Pat Rice is getting a few words of wisdom. Something the professor has spotted. Fernandez had a little check to the left. There wasn't anybody there. Great ball in for Vaughan, and he couldn't collect it. It was a dream of a pass from Fernandez. And now Yobo's been dispossessed by Ali Adier. Baptista's making his way into the middle. Rosicki. Fabregas lets it run to Baptista. Now Fabregas! It's a great stop by Howard. Torek. Again, Colo Torek. Sprawling challenge from Stubbs. Second challenge is a great one from Lescott. 
One of Arsenal's best moves of the game. Abregas thought he was about to celebrate his first Premiership goal of the season, but Tim Howard's legs ruled otherwise. And dropped down for Carsley. Now Arteta. Fernandez. Scott's got on his bike. And he's past Jungberg. And was being held back by Freddie Jungberg. An overly exuberant cheer from Everton supporters who feel that they might not have got the lion's share of decisions today. Cheers turn to booze when they realise that Jungberg isn't going to get booked. It's Arteta to take it. by Baptista, this is Carsley and that's Yobo onto the roof with Lehman struggling Yobo had stayed onside it was Lesker who was coming back from an offside position and Lehman wasn't sure where that was dipping this is Fabregas Zetsky Point. Fabregas, nowhere to go though. Has to hold on. Point. Rzitski makes the dart for it, and Rzitski will reach that. Ali Adier. And Rzitski was the creator. It's a good pass from Hoyt. Great run from Rzitski, but the finish was found wanting. Vaughan, Gilberto holds him off, Osman, Johnson challenging, and it's off the post! Second time that Everton have struck the woodwork. Neville played it in, Gilberto heading clear, it's Leon Osman. Who managed to get a foot to the ball and was unlucky not to score. Fair. Fabregas. Good shot. Howard spills and recovers. And that was swerving away from Howard. Did well in the end. Vaughan. Fernandez. Now Arteta. Johnson and Osman are in the centre. Arteta can't find either of them. To be fair, they were outnumbered by five in Arsenal red and white. And Arsenal haven't done a particularly good job of clearing. Fernandez. Arteta. Better cross this time. Osman. Couldn't direct it. What a big chance for Everton. Arteta had a look up. He picked out Leon Osman, who made the run to get in front of his marker. Justin Hoyt was left behind. And Osman will think that he should have scored. We are into the final minute now at Goodison Park of the 90. Gilberto. It's going to go behind for an Everton corner. The Everton supporters sense that this game might be theirs for the taking. Arsenal can't afford to slip up now. And Setter's corner helped on by Johnson. Johnson has a go again! And Andrew Johnson has scored! as though Johnson has won the match for Everton. It was Everton's top scorer who helped it on. And he quickly got himself turned and ready for any more scraps that might come his way. It's a clean strike. He has poached the goal and he's won it for Everton.
Look what it means to David Moyes. The fact that you won it so late on, does that display the sort of resilience that Everton have shown in your time here? I think so, but uh, any manager will tell you there's nothing better than scoring in the last minute because there's very little chance for the opposition to come back and uh, it's a great feeling to finish the game uh, on a winning side. It's very cruel because we uh, had opportunities as well and uh, overall we battled very hard, played with a great spirit and uh, in the end it's difficult because it happens now uh, three times to us this month that in the last minute of the game you lose, but it's part of football as well. A two-week break now, what are Arsenal's plans for that time? We have no plans because we have nobody at home, everybody is away, so we have just to wait uh, until everybody comes back and to see how we come back. And just word about your, your match winner, Andrew Johnson. I know the PA announcer has confused you for him before. Would, would you have finished in that style? Well, it was, um, it was a fantastic finish by Andy. I mean, he's in the right place at the right time and he's, um, hopefully he can uh, continue that next week. And worthy of an England start? No, I'd, I'd have played Nugent myself, but <laughs> definitely. He, des he deserves it. He's been fantastic for us. Andrew Johnson was keen to point out that he's staying here for a good while. Well, Everton fans love him. He's shown why. Yeah, it's incredible. He had to come out and, and say that. But, uh, you know, we got on well with him. And I hope, he, I hope he does what he done for us today for England. And that's in some coming from a Scotsman. Well, it's helpful if you've got a gifted goal scorer like uh, Andy Johnson on your side. But Everton had a game plan, didn't they, and followed it? Yeah, I mean, uh, this wasn't a good, it wasn't a pretty game to watch, by all means. But... David Moyes set out to, to frustrate Arsenal and that's exactly what he did. I mean, it was time and time again, they just frustrated. And for me, watching them, <coughs> it was all about how hard they worked defensively, Everton. Now, this is, this is Arsenal on the attack. And if we just stop it here, we can just see, look at that. There's eight players behind the ball there. And that makes it really difficult to find gaps to pl play into your strikers. And that was a frustrating time from Same again here, Hoyt's on the ball, can't, no way down the side, comes back into Lundberg and then stop it again. There we go. Eight players again, all behind the ball, thrown into the box. And they, they, they deal with this all afternoon very easily, uh, Everton. But not only were they all well organised defensively, they were so committed. That stubs there. And then Lescott's here, second block, really strong. And then second half, down the side, the same. Fabregas <coughs> manages to get away here. Look at Carsley on the cover. Great block here. Lescott's in there again, and they clear. And it, that, was, that was the feature all the time. And um, this is, oh, this is another one, Rizisky. Now, he comes, what you say is show inside, show inside. And you show people inside. Look at that again. Many, many blue shirts behind, the, behind there. Just gets a lucky break here, gets away. And when it comes to Lundberg, there's really nothing for him to shoot at. And it was a really, really frustrating afternoon for, for Arsenal. Mm -hmm. But we should, uh, we should give some credit to Arsenal's incompetence here, in, in the sense we've got some <laughs> world-class players not quite at their world-class best. Yeah, I, I just think that, for me, Fabregas is at the centre of everything they do. And, you know... I think he's one of the best, best passers in the game. Here, now look at the options he's got, just gives the ball away. And this happened time and time again with him, because he's, he's at the centre of everything they do, he gets the team playing, and the passing and, uh, is the best feature. Baptista, well, I mean, I pick him out here because I just thought he had a really poor game. Um, he gave the ball away, he, he, look at this situation here, if you freeze it here, right, he's got options. He can run into the space, he can run to play a one-two, but just look what he does. He slips the ball down the side there. Ali Adier, is, he's not even looking to run. There was just no cohesion, no understanding. And then to cap it all off, really, he has a great chance here. And I, this isn't anybody we're picking on. This is a Brazilian international. And I just feel he should do a lot better. I mean, Arsene Wenger said, you know, he's already made his mind up whether he's going to keep him for next season or not. And to me, that, that speaks volumes. With Adebayor, Henri and Van Persie out, that's, this is a great opportunity for him to, to, to really seal a, a fresh deal with Arsenal. And go. The tall guy's often been the fall guy, but nobody enjoyed themselves more yesterday than Peter Crouch, as his long campaign continued to persuade the doubters that he's a proper footballer. Arbeloa has it back for Liverpool. Nice back heel. Two. Arbeloa with a chance to deliver. Crouch! Inside four minutes. Aurelio. Up goes Crouch! Played in and helped goalwards and headed in by Aga. There is Toure and Gallas puts the ball in from close range. Mascherano. Pennant first time in. Count let it run. Peter Crouch, hat trick chance! 
in front of the cop. It's a Peter Crouch treble. Results were Alan Kerbisley's thoughts pre-match. West Ham, the last team to beat Arsenal in a home tie and looking to build on back-to-back -back wins. Arsenal themselves were on the back of successive defeats and they missed enough chances to win several matches. Cesc Fabregas could have scored inside 90 seconds. Emmanuel Adebayor then spurned two good openings. And when Arsenal did hit the target, they found West Ham keeper Robert Green in top form. Wenger wasn't happy. Though former Arsenal goalkeeper Bob Wilson and Catherine Tate to his left didn't seem too bothered. But Arsenal were hit by a sucker punch in first half injury time. Bobby Zamora with his fourth in four games. An absolute steal, but what a priceless goal it could be. Wenger angry at half time, convinced the West Ham striker was offside. Into the second half and it was more of the same as Green denied first Gilberto from the edge of the box. And then Adebayor from just six yards out. And when Arsenal finally beat Green, Fabregas found the bar. And Gilberto the post as Arsenal racked up 30 efforts on goal without finding the net. It was one-way traffic from the first to the last minute and uh, I feel everything went against us. Uh, uh, the fact that uh, we missed early chances was always more pressure on the next one who had the chance and in the end you couldn't believe that nobody could put the ball in the net. Since I've been at the club we've not had much luck and um, you know uh, you need that ingredient in it as well. Um, so we've got a little bit of that at the moment and we've got the bit between our teeth and uh, we can see some light. Defeat leaves Arsenal looking over their shoulders in the race for fourth place. Next up for West Ham, a trip to fellow strugglers, Sheffield United. Tony Campbell, Sky Sport.